Compared to many other early medieval battles, we know quite a lot about the Battle of Hastings, which took place on the 14th of October 1066. Firstly, we have plenty of accounts of the battle, such as that of the chronicler William of Malmesbury, and of course, the visual depiction of the Bayeux Tapestry, which was made sometime in the 1070s. Finally, we also know where the battle was fought. After his victory, William the Conqueror had an abbey built on the site, Battle Abbey, which still stands today, preserved by English heritage. During the battle, the Anglo-Saxons, commanded by King Harold, took up position on this ridge. Although many had arrived on horseback, they mostly fought on foot. They formed a tight line at the top of the ridge, armed with throwing spears and axes that they wielded with two hands. The Normans, by contrast, fought on horseback. They made repeated charges against the English line, which cost the Normans a considerable number of men and horses. All this took its toll on morale, and it was rumoured at one point that William himself had been killed. This reportedly led to William removing his helmet and riding up and down his lines to reassure his soldiers he was still alive. In the end, persistence paid off. The Normans succeeded in breaking the English line, and in the ensuing carnage, Harold was killed. With so much information about the battle, you might imagine it's easy to figure out how the Normans won. Unfortunately, however, all of the surviving sources say different things, leading historians to draw very different conclusions. One popular traditional theory is that Harold's army was simply too tired to mount an effective defence. The Anglo-Saxons had fought another major battle less than a month before at Stamford Bridge in Yorkshire. This was against the King of Norway, Harold Hardrada, who, accompanied by Harold's brother Tostig, had invaded to stake his own claim to the English throne. Harold had been waiting for William on the south coast when news of Hadrada's invasion reached him and had to rush his army north to fight the Norwegians. On this occasion, the Anglo-Saxons won a decisive victory and the Norwegians were forced to flee back to their ships. But immediately afterwards, Harold learned that Duke William had landed and had to hastily march his army all the way back down to the south coast to counter this new threat. After marching the length of the country twice and fighting a pitched battle, it is perhaps unsurprising that the Anglo-Saxon army was not at its full strength. However, some historians argue that even if Harold's army had been fully rested, it was meeting the Normans at a disadvantage. Reginald Allen Brown, for example, argues that a Norman victory was always likely, given their superior military tactics and technology. The Normans, unlike the Anglo-Saxons, fought on horseback, armed with all the latest in 11th century military hardware. In particular, they used the couched lance. This meant that they held their lances under the arm, which concentrated the force of the horse and its rider against their assailant. The shock of the repeated assaults by the phalanxes of Norman knights against their line was simply too much for the Anglo-Saxons to resist. Another factor, which is mentioned by all the chronicles, but not portrayed in the Bayeux Tapestry, is that at some point late in the battle, Harold lost control of his troops. When the Norman horsemen were hurled back from the Anglo-Saxon line, part of Harold's army went chasing after them. Some sources suggest that this was a deliberate tactic, a feigned retreat on the part of the Normans, designed to encourage the Anglo-Saxons to break their own line in pursuing knights pretending to retreat. Whether the retreat was real or feigned, it proved disastrous for the Anglo-Saxons. The Normans rallied themselves, wheeled round and crushed the pursuing Anglo-Saxons. In some accounts, it seems that the Normans managed this trick not once, but twice. William of Poitiers describes how, as before, some thousands of them dared to rush, almost as if they were winged, in pursuit of those they believed to be fleeing. The Normans, suddenly wheeling round their horses, checked and encircled them, and slaughtered them to the last man. Having used this trick twice with the same result, they attacked the remainder with greater determination. So we have three different theories to explain the Norman victory at Hastings. 
Although historians continue to dispute which was the most significant, at some point in the battle we know that Harold was killed, the final blow to Anglo-Saxon morale, and the fight was lost soon afterwards. Victorious, William then proceeded to London and had himself crowned king on Christmas Day 1066, but the fight for England was far from over. William now had to consolidate his victory at Hastings. The Norman conquest had only just begun. <laughs>